Hi, I'm Siva Balasundram, and I'm going to talk to you about innovation and challenges in agriculture. Now, agriculture is perhaps one of the oldest professions. Um, agriculture has gone through a very fascinating paradigm shift, and uh, what started out as a basic uh, activity for food production. You know, there was a time when people grew crops uh, purely for food production. And you know, food is our basic need. Then, of course, with time, agriculture started changing image. Um, and that's when people were more concerned with increasing their food production at a very significant uh, rate. And that's how we got what is known as the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution was a very interesting era because that's a time when um, practitioners of agriculture were using superior planting materials. Um, there was a lot of use of um, chemicals in, in, in the sense that uh, people started looking at um, high volumes of fertilizer and pesticide applications. And of course, irrigation technologies were also um, developed. So this was an era where the objective was really to increase or to multiply your production in such a way that could um, deal with the issue of human hunger. And, um, and so agriculture had a facelift. Now, this era of green revolution took place sometime in the late 60s and went on through the 70s. And in fact, today, what we have is really the spin-offs of the green revolution, um, where we, we have a very uh, exciting uh, suit of cutting-edge technologies that are being employed in agriculture. And so, these uh, technologies are giving a newer face to agriculture, um, where people are harnessing the available technologies in which were created for other fields. Um, and, and so production of food or even non-food services have taken a leap. Now, this brings us to where we are now and where we might be heading forward. That is what we call as the new agriculture. Now, the new agriculture is very fascinating because it's just not about food production anymore. It includes agricultural services. It's given a whole new meaning to agriculture. At one time, it was just about growing the crops or rearing animals. And within that confines of whatever um, uh, parameters, but today, we are dealing with the environment, and we are dealing with uh, creating a very benign ecology you know, to facilitate the agriculture which we have um, you know, in terms of um, crop production, animal production, and uh, also services, you know, such as agro-tourism and, and so on. So, so the, the meaning of agriculture today has really, really taken uh, a huge shift. And uh, you know, the shifting paradigms of agriculture um, has never been uh, more dramatic than as of now, because we have a situation where uh, we all agree that food is important, uh, especially feeding a growing planet. We also agree that we have to produce food in a very sustainable manner. And, and for that, we, we have to interact with the environment and we have to protect the ecology. All right? Now, agriculture is fascinating for more than one reason. Um, agriculture today is business driven. That means nobody really crops or tills the soil as a hobby anymore. You know, people are concerned about making money making profits, and, and for that, you have to attract 
a whole new uh, group of practitioners, um, you have to create that, that overwhelming interest among farming communities. Um, and so there's a lot of excitement. And there's also a huge element of creativity involved in agriculture today. And that's, like, that's why I like to term it as the Disneyfication effect, you know, where, where things are exciting, things are colorful, things are, um, you know, uh, different from what it used to be. All right? Of course, creativity is subjective. Um, this diagram, this picture show, captures that uh, very well. Um, now, let's try and, and, and take a step back and see how have we, uh, how far have we really progressed. We have um, abundant food supply in the developed world, uh, especially in the developed world, you know. We have also um, adequate food in developing countries. Uh, food is everywhere, you know. In fact, today people say, yeah, it's true that there are some places food is not enough, but there's also a lot of places where food is more than enough. So this has been a very huge uh, progress, you know, uh, for agriculture. And of course, there's also fresh fruits and vegetables all year round, you know. So we, we, um, we, we can consume this kind of uh, foods um, all year round without having to wait for a particular season, you know. In fact, uh, today, uh, for example, rice. Rice is um, a grain crop and there are, there are systems where rice can be grown three times a year. And, and that's a huge uh, uh, spin-off in terms of uh, progress. And of course, food is also affordable, um, relatively speaking. Uh, people, you know, they don't spend a huge chunk of their um, income in trying to put food on the table, especially in the developed world. Yes, I agree that food cost has risen uh, dramatically over the past uh, several years due to energy issues and so on. But in general, we can say, it's safe to say that food has remained affordable in, in more ways than one. Okay? And then, of course, we have specialty foods such as coffee, tea, chocolate, and spices um, around the world. And, and this is no longer a very niche um, uh, commodity anymore. It can be found in many parts of the world over. You know? so, so this is an example of how we have actually progressed in leaps and bounds. Huh? And of course, we have effective preservation technologies that allow uh, much of our agricultural produce, which are highly perishable, to be stored for a longer time. Then of course, we have mechanization to produce high labor efficiency. And, and this has enabled farmers the world over to, to crop um, larger acres of land and uh, to produce their outputs in a very efficient manner. And uh, we also have recorded great improvements in soil conservation. Um, as you can see, soil loss has been a huge problem. In fact, it still is today. Um, arable land has been losing its value simply because um, the soil fertility levels have dipped and this has been, you know, to a large extent uh, caused by nutrient mining and, uh, you know, growing crops on the same land over and over without um, a good supply of nutrients. So, so this has caused a lot of um, nutrient mining. And at the same time, physical effects of um, heavy rainfall incidents and, and, um, and other natural um, interventions have caused um, erosion, which is causing our soil to no longer be soil. They, they turn into sediments. Okay? Now, agricultural inputs for quick solutions 
are readily available today. We have um, various types of products that enhance crop growth and uh, soil health. So, so this provides for a very um, healthy way for, for us to produce our crops uh, efficiently. All right. Now, in this talk, I'm going to focus on uh, production agriculture. Um, and the concept here is there is the one end of planting, that's the beginning. And of course, there's the other end of harvesting. So what happens from planting to harvesting is what um, we term as agronomic management. And in agronomic management, um, these are among the three very important and critical um, areas that we often look at. One is fertilization. And of course, the other is pest and disease control. And of course, uh, the, uh, the third one is irrigation. So these are, I would call, the very necessary inputs in production agriculture. So, so in this talk, I will touch a little bit on planting right up to harvesting in a very embedded way, especially for harvesting, because it's embedded in new technologies that are available today. And, uh, and I will also uh, discuss with you about the agronomic management. Now, if we look at um, the beginning, you know, that is planting. Of course, in order for us to have high quality crops, we should have high quality seeds. Uh, seeds these days are, are in hybrid formats. They are in clonal or even varietal um, uh, arrangements. So we have seeds that are able to produce high yields due to very intense um, breakthroughs in plant breeding programs. You know, uh, plant breeders have uh, worked very hard to come up with seeds that that can not only produce high yields, but they can produce high yields in a very continuous manner. Okay, so we have um, a superior uh, planting materials in that, uh, in that sense. And then, of course, we have a technology called tissue culture, which is also very uh, fascinating in the sense that it is able, it's, it's able to churn out um, planting stock uh, or planting materials in a very rapid manner. Tissue culture is an asexual approach to uh, plant propagation. You can basically take any uh, cell out of the plant. The cell can come from a leaf, from a uh, root, or from the stem. And you can culture this cell um, in vitro. And you can actually grow a seedling. So, and these seedlings are produced under controlled environment, and therefore you can mass produce. You can produce um, a, a large volume of uh, planting material um, to facilitate your, your farming. Okay, and uh, many high value crops are adopting these technologies today um, tissue culture and micropropagation um, in order to. Uh, keep up with the demand for such crops. Huh? 